Okie dokie. Um, testing one, two. How is everybody today? Tonight? This morning, this evening, wherever we happen to be. Um, I'm in Perth, West Australia. It's uh, 8.23 in the morning, which is pretty, pretty late for me. I usually get up around 6 in the morning. Sometimes, no, I usually get up around 4.30 or 5. Just make it all happen. Make it all happen nice and early. We've got um, Gaddis, Gaddis, Kate. I think I, I, I do apologize. I don't stream very often. So I look at these people and I vaguely remember some names. But a lot of familiar names here. Dax, Jastub, definitely. Don't know who this scribble dingler twit is. Um, it's Dylan. Good to see you. Cosmonte. What time is it? Where you at? Yeah, I just said. Um, coming up sort of on like 8, well, it's 8.23 a.m. in Perth, West Aussie. Got the air conditioner blasting away because it's going to be probably 40 degrees Celsius. I've got these almonds for my energy supply. I've got uh, the rest of my coffee. These almonds are really dry. Bloody hell, you know, you get cotton mouth. You end up swallowing just as much air as you do food. It's so, so dry. And I've got a nana. Just for those of you who don't know what that looks like. And some salted peanuts. Um, so what I'm going to go and do for you guys this stream is I'm going to take you through some project files, probably most of which you've already heard. I'll show you kind of how I've mixed things. I'll give you some tips on mixing. Sorry, that sounds disgusting, doesn't it? The sound of almonds mushing around my teeth while I'm speaking. That's exactly what you want. And um, I'm also going to show you some stuff that, um, let's see, tracks. I'll t I'll just I'll show you some stuff that I'm working on. There's 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 some stuff, but mm, not a hell of a lot. And I'll take you through some samples that I've been I've been recording samples from a whole heap of vinyls, just tons and tons of. I've just I've recorded just under like 800 sounds or something over the course of two weeks. Just crazy, crazy. 7.30 p.m. says Cosmonte. It's a good time. Are you planning on bringing back Radio Pogo? I don't think so. I don't think so. I, I just, yeah, I don't know. Um, it was It was fun while it lasted, and then it wasn't fun anymore. It was like... What am I doing? I'm just rifling through requests. And we, and we had this system where people would, you know, we set it up in the chat so that you could type in a, a song and an artist and the system would go and find it and play it. <clears throat> but every time we did that, there was like 500 requests in the space of 30 seconds and you, you're never gonna get your request through. So it was kind of pointless. And yeah, why do I need to go through people's um, tastes in music and you know, <laughs> thumb up or down. I think mostly it was just for the fun. But I, I don't need to do it again. I really don't. Donks and nobbles. Yeah, that was it. Mm. Oh, thank God for coffee. Anyway, let's just see if this works. We'll get this cracking. The concern I have with this is I'm using the same machine to process the stream as the one I'm using for all of this production stuff. So this might be, this might not be such a good idea. We'll see. And I'm going to have to get my headphones on. This is a bit of a work in progress at the moment. Big tip for you guys is if you're doing um, anything music production related, you should definitely, definitely be color coding all your stuff. That way you can look at things and you know exactly what it is. In fact, you should color code stuff in a template project and then you make it so that that template thing loads every time that you open up FL Studio or Ableton or Bitwig or Final um, Logic or whatever it is you're using. Pogo chewing ASMR. Yeah. God, are you getting that just now? That stream takes ages to reach your end. Holy majoli. Was fun until copyright. Yeah, copyrights ruined everything, hasn't it? It's coming for us all. Hmm. 
Anyway, so let me see if this works. It was working when I tested stuff. So let's have a look. Yep, that's pretty loud. Almost took my ear, my earlobes off. As long as your PC doesn't catch fire whilst it's streaming and processing music, it's all good. Well, it won't catch fire. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised in this heat. But yeah, it's just, it's it's all the stuff going on. Like I'm recording the stream, I'm uploading the stream. OBS is sitting at around 20% CPU. And what are we doing in FL? What is that? 28%. Hmm. I think we'll, we should be okay. She kept hearing noises. She also held herbs, but it and wrapped up on the tobacco. To the trick top trick, 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 to the trick top trick. You like it? Yes, yes. <laughs> nice. Oh, it's it's lovely, isn't it? It's a marvel. <laughs> See, I need to rename that because I don't know. And those rides are a bit shrill. Hmm. Oh, and these are disabled. Why are these disabled? That's better. So this is still quite loose. Rains. I haven't timed this yet. I find ch um, FL Studio really wants warp points, you know, so that you can, you, I know it's kind of an Ableton Live thing, but just the ability to be able to create a point there, a point there, and then elastically kind of move these things around. Um, to do that at the moment, you either have to load this whole thing up in new time or you just have to make unique slices here and then treat them each individually, which is just a freaking pain. Yeah. Um, so yeah, these are voices. This is a voice that I did sample from vinyl. In fact, I used an AI algorithm to extract the voices on their own, the voice on its own. Actually, let's take off all the processing so you can hear it dry. Uh, so if, actually the whole thing is this. But I quite like the little repeat and then we mix it. So for mixing vocals these days, excuse me, I'm using this. Might be helpful to put the screen up. I'm using this. This is um, Pro MB. So what it's doing is it's it's dynamically compressing different areas of the frequency spectrum. So it's kind of like it's dynamically um, adjusting the volume of the chest, the volume of the throat, the volume of the nose, because um, I, I just I like my vocals to be consistent. So I'm absolutely ab like not in this case but I'm, I usually abuse this plugin yeah so that's progress that's pretty much all I've done on this so far not a hell of a lot um let's just check comments real quick uh, Drip Chad, how you doing? Um, Navy, good to see you again. Bloody hell, mate, that's been a long time. Happy New Year. Yes, Happy New Year to everybody. 
fingers crossed that this was that this is the one. Um, this almost feels wrong getting to hear it before it's done. It's, does, it, does it feel a bit filthy? Does it? Feels a bit filthy. Good to see you, um, Pollux. Pollux visuals. First time chat. Good to see you. RX eight. RX nine is out now. I think. Um, yeah. So. If you're if you want to extract vocals, the RX suite is good, but there are websites that are better, where they run an algorithm <clears throat> on the server that they have all the time, and it's machine learning. It's got terabytes of training data. I think um, Lala.ai is one, and it's very very good. RX is okay, but you should be using a dedicated AI service if you really want to extract vocals or bass lines or guitars or drums and man I'll tell you it does a really freaking good job it's actually kind of criminal because a lot of them are free I don't know how they I don't know how they're doing that there are there are online websites for isolating vocals yes yep exactly yeah lala dot lalal dot AI is insane it is very very good yeah I, that's that's a go-to. I use Splitter.ai for most of the separation. Splitter. Not heard of that. Um, let me just write that down on this gigantic notepad. Splitter AI. I'm just going to keep a note of everything people say. Yeah, so that's progress on that. Um, I haven't mixed it terribly much. What's happened there? Oh, what's happening here? Interesting. Okay. Another hint I would give you guys is when you're doing your drums, and I'll show you the project files for the stuff on the latest album that's just come out, uh, Cosmolux. Um, one thing that I've discovered is compression on kick drums and snare drums. It changes everything. I used to think of compression just as you know equaling out, uh, equalizing the levels across a piece of audio and I thought well that's going to flatten my drums and stuff it, only if you have your attack too low if you have your attack set just right so let's see again why are all these things turned off what is going on right so that's with compression and a bit of reverb under the compressor that's dry see and your kick drum here as well. That's dry. That's with a compressor. If you're listening on a phone, you're probably not going to hear the difference. But I'll show you. So press work is what I'm using here. If you can see that, it's a bit small. You like it? And then after that, I have standard clip. And also, when you're doing your master channel, which, yeah, for some reason I haven't actually Oh no, I have. Yeah, so I've got Pro L, Pro L two. Okay, so there's two things happening here. There's a clipper, and there's a limiter. And I used to think they're the same thing. They're not. A limiter is basically just a very, very fast compressor. A clipper, on the other hand, it actually cuts off anything above a certain level and this is really really good for driving into a compressor because it helps your limiter to pull volume down um, without getting snagged on really sharp peaks and stuff so let's go to the loud bit let's just boost this a bit so you see these red lines here those are the bits that are being chopped so those peaks are being eliminated so that they don't trip up your limiter too much. 
And another cool tr uh, trick is you can actually press the headphone icon here in Pro L. What just happened? I feel like something happened. Um, and you can audition what the limiter is doing. So that could use a bit more, if anything. See, and then without the clipper, we we'll start getting sharper peaks. So you want to clip, then you want to limit, and then you want to maybe clip again. God, oh, that copy's strong. That is a double shot for certain. Yeah, those almonds is ah, bloody hell, they're dry, mate. It's like you just get instant cotton mouth. No, I won't. I'll, I'll wait till I actually need them. I'll get onto the nana before the almonds. This is the first time I've been on one of your streams. Oh, cool. Thanks for coming, mate. Awesome to be here. Awesome to have you. I hope Tigorific comes out in another album. You see, I was going to put Tigorific on this one, but, um... Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I have this thing where I, I finish a track and then it's like, I'm already... I'm already over it. I, I already want to make something better. I've already surpassed... Um, what used to be my standards at the time. Like, b b before I even finish a track, I'm already thinking... I could do better than this next time. I, I think Tigorific would be good to go back and, I don't know, improve it. Although the video's already out, isn't it? So, I don't know. Maybe it's not worth doing anything. Data and Picard is our family favorite. Thanks very much, Cosmonti. That's really cool. Any tips when it comes to arranging effectively? I haven't done much arranging on this one. Um, let me see if I can find something... Where I have. Hmm. Hmm. Actually, yeah, this is a good example. Tears in her eyes. Let's see if we can load that without breaking the stream. Um, I'm going to start getting into my nana. I need some natural sugar. This better not be somebody's um, somebody's kink. <clears throat> okay, so. Gonna put that on my desk. Put a nana on the wood. No worries. Yeah, that probably does sound disgusting. I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I am sorry. I should have thought about this first. All right. What do we got here? Oh yeah. So somebody asked in the comments about um, vocal arranging. I guess this track has some vocal arranging stuff in it. Mm. But I did this on the MPC, so what you're looking at here is actually audio that I've exported out of the MPC as a, as stems, and then I've kind of re-chopped it and gone from there. So, let's have a look here. Okay, there's a massive delay on that because I've disabled the automation. Sorry. Okay, let's um, let's up this latency. Yeah, two fifty six is a bit low, isn't it? Hmm. I hope that doesn't break stuff. So, somebody asked about vocal chopping and arranging. I don't really have any tips that I can give you. I I like vocal bits that are breathy and natural. And. Uh, yeah, I, I actually kind of prefer things where the person isn't singing. Because when a person speaks in an interview, it's really natural and organic. When The moment somebody sings, you start putting on a persona. And only the best singers can not do that, I think. So this stuff, you can see here, I've actually gone and automated the volume of each one of these syllables. This is for the album mix. This is not, I didn't do this for the original one that went up on SoundCloud. 
So let me just see if I... So what I love about FL Studio is this is a single clip. So if I've got two of these and I change something in one of them, it does it in both, you see? So this is just an instance, which is awesome. I absolutely love that. And the other cool thing about an automation clip is it exists as a channel. So this is a tip for you guys. If you want to do side chaining, like every time there's a kick drum, if you want the bass to swoop down in volume, you can do that with manual automation. You can do it with side chaining, obviously. But another way of doing it is, like let's say we take, um, let's say we want to change the volume of the bass line here. So. So instead, you never automate the mixer volume slider knob. You always automate something else because once you've automated your mixer knob, you can't use it anymore. So what I'll do here, just for to give you an example, um, let's put in a fruity balance. Let's just see if I can do this. Balance. No, it's not going to find it. Fruity. God, it's not a good search engine, is it? God, you're kidding me. Maybe it's only searching the ones that I've favorited. Maybe that's what it's doing, because I don't think I've favorited that one. Yeah, there it is. Give me that. Okay, so this is what we're going to automate here, is this volume knob. So, I'm just going to draw a thing here create automation clip and now what do we want the volume to do every time there's a kick drum well maybe we want it to curve like this slightly okay but now I don't want to go through and draw that curve for each friggin kick drum in the the mix right so instead what I'm going to do is once I've got this I'm just going to rename this to um, base duck because we're ducking. Now, take a look at this. You've now got your bass duck here as a channel. Okay, so every time you've got a kick drum, you can now draw a step in your step sequencer and it will trigger that automation clip. And you can do that in any pattern. So, well, that's really cool because every time we have a kick drum, in our drum pattern, for example, wherever the hell our freaking drum. Actually, yes. Yeah, so we don't have, I don't have MIDI data for my drums here because it's MPC stems audio. However, um, we can very easily create these. So that's a really good way of side chaining without actually side chaining. You just create your little curve, your little curve thing here and then you trigger it on your step sequencer each time you want that curve to happen. You don't have to have any side chaining at all. It's, it's a really, really cool tip that somebody taught me um, a couple of weeks ago, actually. Yeah, so. I'm actually not running a compressor on this voice because I didn't like the effect. I actually. I, I try to avoid compression when I can. I find it just makes things sound too in your face and too loud. I guess it depends on the genre. Something like this, which is more chill, I prefer to go in here and actually draw my own curves. Yeah. Just checking comments. Um, Irish wine is your favorite. Yeah, Bob. That's awesome. Yeah, that was um, that was that was a lot of work. Sleepy boy, good to see you. It's hard to take singing that has context out of that and try to remix it. Yeah, you just have to put it against um, what you're working on and just see if it works. It either does or it doesn't. Um, I'll play you some of the samples that I've recorded from vinyl recently. Three weeks and I've recorded like just under 800 or 700 sounds and these are some of them. Actually, I'll tell you what I'll do is I'll just see if I can normalize this. See if that makes a difference. You can actually hear that properly. So I've used that. 
in um, the boss track one of the new album that's just come out. Little drum falls and things. Mm, that's really pretty. I think that's from Chris Rea, the On The Beach album, which is a record that my parents have had since I was basically born. And amazingly, <laughs> it still works flawlessly. Why should I hurry at all? Yeah, see, so that voice has been extracted using an AI. Why should I hurry at all? Pretty good. The thing that I really find impressive is it even pulls the reverb out with it. How do you do that? Seriously. Science is getting a bit scary. Will this be available as past broadcast? Um, yeah, I might do an edit. I am recording this time. So I might do an edit and put it somewhere. Yeah, it's clean as hell, isn't it? Oh, yes, I do not know. So I have a record. I have a vinyl. I should, I've got them all in a box back there. I have a vinyl of sound effects that are recorded on the streets of New York in 1956. And I think I paid something like 150 bucks for this thing because I went into my friend's vinyl shop and I said, look, I'm looking for rare sound effects. And he's, he sort of had a little think and he goes back into the into his 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 cut his dust cupboard and he comes out with this thing and it's falling apart. But the vinyl is in really good condition. And so that's what that's from. Oh, yes, I do not know. Hmm. Actually. That leads me to something else that I can show you, which I'm working on. Um, ooh, ooh, uh, hmm. Boss. Mm. Um, I'm just going to hide this for a sec. Um, let's have a look. Save changes. Nah, don't need to save changes. Drag and fly. I've got a whole heap of stuff here, but some of it's some of it's a bit secret. It's nothing filthy. It's just, you know, I haven't finished working on it yet. Spyro. Mm, household. I think this is the one. Okay, let's load that. Oh, that's there. That would be better. Um, thank you. Here in Italy, it's really late, says Kairiga. Italy. Cool. Italiana. If it's unfinished, that means it's filthy. Well, yeah. Yeah. Depending on your definition of the word. Um, okay. What was I showing you again? That's right. Uh, yeah. So this uses the same sample as the boss on the new album, but I'm using it in that one instead. Where yeah, so this is that 1956 vinyl I was talking to you guys about. Someone's just like gone around the streets of New York and just recorded sounds at 1956 and it's all legit, it's all authentic. And it's, you, you will never ever hear that audio anywhere else. It's awesome. I'm not sure about this intro yet. I like the idea so far. Um, the thing that inspired the whole thing actually was this brass sample, which I found on some record somewhere. Where the hell is it? Yeah, it's like you can play that on a whole bunch of different keys. But um, the challenge I'm having with this track is the space after the sample is done. You know, it's like 
what, what we're doing after that. I thought about filling this with ride symbols, maybe. Um, then I tried this. This is some. Bridge, which doesn't really glue very well. Very good. Listen, honey. See, so this is before I learned my clipping trick. So, if we look at this limiter and this clipper, let's just turn the clip. Yeah, see, there's a lot coming through there. That's getting pushed pretty hard. So I'm tempted to come in here with a hard clip first. See how much. See how much. Um, See how much legwork standard clip has lifted off Pro L. See, like that's just so much more. It's breathing properly now. Yeah, I, I don't know what to do with this chorus thing. Okay, now what's that? <clears throat> that's a sample that certainly does not belong. What is this? Oh, I see. No, that's... That's a good sample. But I don't know why it's there. No idea why it's there. So what is this bass? To organize this freaking thing. Okay, so I got f I got three samples there, three stacked samples for a bass. It's kind of getting a little bit silly. There's the plug. One of the things I've I've always tried to do with a bass is try to get the sub fundamental frequencies on one track which you'll hear on bigger speakers at the club, on your subwoofers if you've got any, and then another track for the overtones, the, 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 the warm, the, the stuff that's higher up that you can hear on smaller speakers, and that gives it that fullness, which I might show you guys how to do a bit later. I'm not even sure if that's in key. But um, yeah, so that's where I got some of those samples from. Was oh, yes, I do not know. And vinyl. Kids clapping on the street. It's really cool. Anyway, I, I don't know if that's interesting to anybody. What's good? One Simple Gamer, how you doing, man? That's been a while. That's been a while. Oh God, I don't know why I'm drinking that. That's vile. I better get this Nana before it, um, before it, um, mm. that tastes like caramel actually. I think it's the coffee it kind of changes the palate up. Um, Jastuk. Okay, what else have we got here? Samples. Music in speech. I thought that was quite cool. You're a very bad man. Oh, no, no, my... Yeah, yeah, here, here we are. That's cool. This song I call Noise... <laughs> it's a kick. Yeah. Again, that's a sound that I recorded from vinyl, 
but then extract it using an AI thing. It's pretty good. All that needs is a compressor on it to fatten it up. Yeah. Mmm. Mmm. Really nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like shit like this. It's just saying, loop me. Loop me now. What is that sound you are making? Bang, bang, clash, clash, bang, bang, ding-a-ling. I just, I find voices like that and then I just cut them together. What are your plans for the future? Well, uh, um, well, um, I like to have, uh, got the old, um, <laughs> uh, marking about with, um, um, well, first of all, we're going to, uh, um, uh, matter of fact, uh, you know, what I just, uh, well, jolly, jolly good. Perhaps we can hear some of this, um, um, what? <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. So that's a vinyl I found of Peter Sellers, um, doing both characters and I've, I've cut it together so that it's just all ums and ahs. And um, I really want to use that in a track somewhere at some point. I'm so glad you spiced up Strangerous for the album release. I'm glad you're glad. Because I imagine some people might not be. In fact, I did that with all my with all the tracks on there. And I very sneakily just replaced everything on SoundCloud with the new versions as well. Mm. We'll see if anyone um we'll see if anyone notices. We'll see. I don't know. I honestly god man, I I have I have I've been mixing those tracks for that album for three straight weeks all day every day. On the headphones and then on my speakers and subwoofers downstairs in the lounge and then coming back up here trying again going back down trying again and you know and you think okay that sounds good stranger is i think i went through 23 different mixes and it's like yep okay that's great perfect i've got the snare is just the right amount of snap and then you see you know you get to the end of your three weeks and you push it out, it goes on Spotify, goes on YouTube, and you think, uh, mm, the bass is a little bit growly, isn't it? Uh, it never really, it, ne it never really ends. It never ends. Like, I, for those of you who've listened to the track a lot, you will be very aware of that new distorted electric bass guitar in the uh, the bridge and in the intro and you know i think it works i think it works i don't know but everything else i'm much happier much happier with the mix it's the best it's ever sounded, I think. I replaced the snare drum completely. I gave it a whole new chain for compression. The kick drum I compressed. And when you compress a kick drum or a snare, it's not about flattening it. It's actually about the opposite. It's about giving you the illusion of loudness. It's a really, you know, what you learn is that loudness is in the mix. It's not in the master. So if you've compressed your kick drum just right, and you've compressed your snare drum just right, gives it that pa, gives it that impact. Your ear, your brain says, that's loud. I, I compress all my drum stuff now. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Mm. That's the secret sauce. That's the secret sexiness. What are your plans for the future? I don't know. Well, I don't know. I don't have any plans for the future. No plans. I'm a very in the moment kind of person, you know? I get the most joy out of sitting down in my cave and just making something. Some people 
I guess, get their kicks from planning and um, trying to build something like long term. And I totally appreciate that. I just can't do it. I have to be in the moment doing stuff now. Do it now. Um, Efrio, good to see you, man. Oh, thank you very much, man. I appreciate that. Dreaming, dreaming dog years. Can you compress my student loans? Why do you have them in the first place? I don't need a diploma, do you? What do I need a diploma for? I get the whole diploma thing. Like if you want to go and cut somebody up and fix their heart. Yeah. Yeah, you should probably go and study that shit. But you want to make music. You want to paint, you want to draw. What do you need a diploma for? Seriously. I feel so sorry for my parents. I really do. They spent so much money getting me into SAE, which is um, a film and music production sort of university college thing. Very, very good. I loved my teachers there. I did 3D animation, I did film. But you do walk out of there thinking, yeah, I could have learned all of that online. <laughs> I'm not even exaggerating. I could have learned all of that online. I could have gone onto a website like Linda or, oh man, there's, there's, there's so many now, there's so many. It used to just be a Linda and digital tutors. Now there's freaking millions, I think there's Skillshare. <sighs> yeah. Diplomas, I don't know. If someone wants to work for me or something, right? And they say, here's my portfolio. And I listen to it and it's like, fuck, that, that sounds really good. But where's your diploma? Where's your diploma? Sorry. Nah, that never happens. Never happens. I think you're either good at your shit or you're not. You've either got that special something or you don't. And I don't think a diploma is that special something. I don't know. I'm going off on a massive tangent. Massive tangent. Is my mic clipping? No. I'm a CNC programmer and learned all on the job. No schooling for it. Yeah. Yeah, look, I mean, some things you, you, you should get freaking qualifications for. Yeah, absolutely. Medicine. Um, fiber optic cabling. My friend Matt was telling me he had to go through like six um, weeks, or was it six months of training to, do, to, to splice fiber optic cable. You know how you've got fiber internet through your house now. You know that if you cut that cable open and you look in it, you won't see any light, but you'll go blind like that. If you want like a gigabit internet speed in your house, that's a pretty powerful connection. And if you cut that cable open and you look at it, you go blind instantly. So yeah, you need qualifications for that shit. I hope you're getting a diploma or something. But arts, mm -mm. no, no, don't get sold into that idea. You wanna be a music producer? You better get a certificate. No, no, no. Um, dreaming dog years, good to see you. Thanks for coming. You listen to a mix with no compression, you go blind too. No, it just sounds really dry. Like these almonds. I'm getting cotton mouth, honestly. I'll tell you what, this is, <coughs> this is why I brought my water jug up here. <coughs> Let's try to do this without getting H2O in my keyboard. Ah, oh, that feels good. Ah, oh, that's just what I needed. Justic says, you should collab with Todd Edwards. He's been on a collab kick recently. Cool. Todd Edwards, yeah. When is your band from USA up? 
It's up now. It's done. The question is, can I get out of Australia with everything going on? And then can I even get into America? I don't know. I'd love to tour again. I really would, man. Freaking hell. I miss that. I miss that so much. I don't think Australians can even leave Australia at the moment. I'm not sure. I think we're opening up. Excuse me. I think we're opening up a bubble with New Zealand, Japan, maybe. Don't know about UK. UK's um, got the whole thing happening. Yeah. Um, what was I going through? Samples. If anyone's just joined and they don't know what I'm waffling about, I've been through vinyls for the past few weeks and I've recorded just under 700 sounds, like bass notes, chords. Ooh, what a fearful noise. Voices. She earned in rabbit wool mitties. And then I record a voice like this, but then I cut it together so that it's not English anymore. I don't know, it's, it's, a, it's a hobby. She earned in rabbit wool mitties. I once paired a garden. She also sold herbs, murid, and rapped upon the tobacco. Little did not very much sound. He came round the of the fur dough and in the knee on the top of his cousin. Everyone's like, yes. Um, loop, bass, trombone. Mm, really nice. Yeah, I love it. Chris Rio. Stuff like that's useful, but it is a bit of an unusual chord. Yeah, little plucky things like that are fun. Um, have I got anything else to... Yeah, I suppose I can go through the cabin fever thing at some point. Dragonfly. Yeah, I'll go through dragonfly. Let's do that. I'm not really 100% on the Dragonfly track. I've, I never have been. It's just that I, I was listening to it when I was putting this album together and I was like, oh yeah, I put a lot of work into that, a lot of time. Maybe I should put that in. And so I did. And the mix was awful. So I've, I spent like days and days just mixing it all again. That's what this is here. Um, I'm still not really 100% on it, to be honest. I think I'm going to have to up this uh, latency. That's not playing friendly. That's being a bit nasty. Spyro. Wanna know a secret? Good. Shoot. Always been can be so always been terrible. You can take burger this. On top. Try to let Yeah, this track is um there's a lot going on here. <laughs> There's a lot going on here, guys. Even at my max latency, I'm 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 spiking, I'm peeking out. Mm. But yeah, you know, you can see like I have just gone absolutely batshit insane with multi-band compression on this vocal strip because bloody hell, it's it's nasal, it's throaty, and the other problem is that you know you. You want to make a patchwork of different voices. Well, each voice is different. Each voice is recorded maybe in a different location, a different mic. And so you have to, you have to try and even all of that out, which is exactly what's happening here. Yeah, bloody hell, this is not going to work. No, no. It's like, nope, not doing it. Not doing it. Do I have the original mix here? No, I don't. Yeah. Um, hmm. I don't know. Always been can be so always been terrible. You can be. But I'll turn the effects off so you can kind of hear the difference. I see ya. We're routing to a reverb, so we won't do that. Routing to three different reverbs and delays. Cease. Every purpose blooded kick for get of my I've been there is a try. Alright, let's try one more time. Every purpose blooded kick for get of my I've been there is a dragonfly butterflies. No, it's like nope. To hell with that. That's that, sh that track's too shit. 
My sound card doesn't approve. Um, let's see. Polka dot positive. Supremo. Yeah. I don't actually have the project files for these tracks anymore. So what I did was I exported just the audio. And that way I can pull it back in and mix the master, which is, uh, well, it's, it's not as powerful, but um, here's the chain. So let's turn everything off. This is the one that first went out. I don't know when I first put this one out. And then. Yeah, so if you're listening on a phone, you, you won't you won't hear the difference at all. But basically what I've done is I've tightened up the bottom end quite a lot. I'm also, um, again, multi-band compressing. So cleaning up some muddy stuff here. Taming the mids. Compressing that stuff down. Taking care of some expansion. The cool thing about MB is you can compress or expand per band. Which is really cool. You can solo and hear what you're doing. The main thing I wanted out of this track was just slightly tighter bass. And one thing I've found that is if you open Maximus in FL Studio here, you can actually, you can pretty much draw the compression curve. So if I solo the low end, compressor off, it's a bit looser. See so here it's like, so anytime there's no bass, it just dips, it cuts. It just, it tightens up that bass. And then what I've done is I've actually sent that through another track, which is then doing only the treble. And then the treble I'm pushing down with standard clip. All these red peaks are the ones that are being eliminated because I only want that stuff at the bottom. And then finally I'm compressing that using Pro C. And so the point of that is to get more top end treble, treble and sparkle out of the track, but without boosting the transients and the peaks. I only want everything else, the texture which has been pushed down because I'm working with a master track here. I'm not working with an actual mix. So you kind of just have to improvise. That's the original. See, it's just got a little bit more sparkle on the top. And then obviously for good measure, we're just doing a clip and a limit on the master just to make sure nothing's peaking. So this could actually use more clip before it goes into the limiter. And then we can solo that. So that's what's being limited. So that's how you get more volume and stuff out of your mix. Um, what else do I have here? I've got some stuff that I haven't finished yet. Sort of um, like tracks and things need more bandy. What's that? Any reason why you like the extra bit of high and saturation? I love detail, but I feel like it's more noticeable in the more recent tracks. I just, um, yeah, I've been listening to a lot of my older stuff and it's like, wow, this is really veiled. This is really dark. Like there's no top end information. Um, you know, and then you look at your, your EQ and it's like, yeah, everything over like 2000 ish Hertz, 3000, it just starts rolling off. And I don't know, I, I guess when I was younger, I, I didn't mind that so much, but getting older, I'm like, I, I like a bit of sparkle. I like a little bit of sparkle. 
I, I like a sound that is like that. It's V-shaped. So you're in the middle, the mids, and then you've got bass on that end and you've got treble on that end. I like a V-shape like that, which encapsulates, it kind of, it, it, um, it surrounds you. I, I like a wide sound state. I, I like to feel like I'm enveloped by the bass end and the treble end. And when I was doing the Stranger Things mix, I went back to you know the, the first mix that I did, which went on SoundCloud, and I noticed that instead of being V-shaped like this, it's actually like this. You got the vocals really up here, and then everything else is really down and narrow. And I was you know, I was listening on my speakers downstairs, and I just I thought no, I, I, I don't like this. It's 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 like a pyramid, and I want it to be more like a thing that comes up around me. So I went right back to the whole thing and, and reworked all of it. Um, yeah. And I think that's probably why I go for more detail and, and texture and sparkle these days, because it helps to give you that sense of being enveloped. Um, yeah. And then failing that, I just do a little sing song like this. Ach ja, die Bier, die Bar, die Bar. Die Kunden wollten fragen, ach ja, die deutsche Lanze, nein, der Lanze, mein Ball, die Struppen doch auch Ball, die Ruppen wollen fragen. Ja, Gott, er ist still um, lagging away. FL Studio is really blasting that CPU. Holy majoli. Seriously, man? Come on. Come on, mate. Let's get real now. comments the V shape is an interesting concept definitely know a lot of people that feel differently yeah I don't know it's like when I bought these headphones before these burn in tons of treble loads of treble the DT 990 Pro the biodynamics loads and loads of treble like way too much very peaky in the top end because they haven't burned in yet not all headphones do burn in but these definitely do and i've measured it i can prove it with measurements um and what i found with these is like wow even though it's peaky i still love that sense of being enveloped i, I love that sense i don't like a mix that's all mid-range it's like it's not as immersive. It doesn't get me. And I think the mixes that that I gravitate more towards, that I love listening to, that give me the wow factor, is it mixes with that sense of space and depth and immersion and width. You know. Um, oh, yeah. This is something that I don't know what I'm going to do with this. Why? Why? Why are we getting this bullshit? Why are we getting this bullshit? Hang on. Let's see if I can fix this. System default. Yeah. So why am I getting... Why am I getting lags? <laughs> Wilson's Revenge, we've had that. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's all sounds from Skyward Sword. Yep. 
Actually, that's something I can show you. It's XO. It's a really good plugin. <laughs> Powder cake. Mm, Stranger Things 23. The boss. We've done that. Um, the other thing I'll show you is I've been doing some stuff in Blender. So let's have a look here. Blender. Just making sure this thing isn't clipping and lagging as well. Um, you know, so I started just kind of experimenting, making stuff like this, modeling little things like this. Um, I tried modeling some headphones. Um, I made a bendy toilet. <laughs> uh, tried my logo. And um, then I thought, well, let's do something a bit more interesting. So I was looking at these reference pictures from, this is from an old CD-ROM game called Goosebumps Escape from Horrorland. I played the absolute crap out of this thing when I was a kid. And I thought, man, wouldn't it be amazing if you could remake this game in 3D using the Unreal Engine or something like that, and not just be a, a bunch of images in a panorama. So I thought, well, let's use those reference pictures and let's start modeling something. So I started modeling this in Blender. This is basically just looking at reference pictures and trying to recreate things bit by bit, detail by detail, and um, just putting some basic lights and shadows in there for the meantime, just to try and get that feel. So as we go through, you can see things slowly get a bit more detailed, um, adding some shadows and things, added some bricks on the well, or at least started to. Just going around the whole courtyard of Werewolf Village and trying to block out details kind of level by level. And so this is using the EV renderer. Nothing, spe nothing fancy, nothing special. If I was to bring this into Unreal, um, it would look a hell of a lot better. And so we keep going through, you know, trying some atmospherics here, um, trying a solution for roof tiles and not doing a very good job. So I scrapped that. Um, you can see here, you know, putting out more details in the trash can. I just love the concept of being able to walk around Werewolf Village in a first person view and interact with things, you know, maybe make sounds, make noises and stuff. Um, you get chased by the werewolf maybe. You know, because um, the original game was just a point and click CD-ROM adventure. So I thought, damn, wouldn't it be cool if this could be like an actual 3D thing? Um, yeah, I don't actually know what this is. I think it's a tunnel that goes somewhere. So I've just modeled that to be a tunnel. And yeah, that's about as far as I got. That's like a month, maybe two months of work. <sighs> just. Yeah, just really silly, just silly amounts of work. And eventually I just thought, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to go and make some music now because this is this is this is dumb. This is dumb. That's as far as I got. And I thought, OK, that'll do. If I'd go any further with it, I'll need a schedule. I'll need a project plan. I'll need someone to help me with texturing. There's no texturing. Obviously, there's no um, there's no normal maps. There's no bitmaps or anything. It's just it's just all grey boxing at this stage. Um, and I haven't decided if I want the wooden panels to be geometry or just normal maps, you know, so I have sort of started putting uh, I have started putting like these kind of wood panels here, but they don't look very good. So I think I might just use normal maps for that in the future. If I come back to it, because on it, it's just it's just bonkers. The closer you get to finishing it, the further you get, because it's like the details, it's the details that take the most amount of time. It's absolutely nuts. Um, doing some photography, <laughs> just taking photos of stuff that I think looks cool. Found someone pinned a whole bunch of shoes under a bridge for some reason. Thought that's a cool picture. Wood textures and things. I like wood. I don't know why. I just think wood is really pretty. And I'll show you this as well. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever noticed this, but the Matrix, the Matrix, the new Matrix came out not long ago. What's it called? Um, Resurrections or something. 
And it got me thinking, hmm, um, a matrix uh, mix would be pretty cool. But now, which version of the matrix am I going to use? Am I going to use the new Blu-ray version? Or am I going to use the DVD? And this is why I have the conundrum. Okay, so this is what I've got. I've got the 4K Blu-ray on the left there and the Matrix DVD. I found the first, I found that DVD in a secondhand store. And I went looking for it because I knew, I knew I wanted it. And this is why, this is why. So on the left, I've screen capped from the Blu-ray and on the right, I've screen capped from the DVD. Now you can see something's happened. It's not the format. It's not, it's not my player. It's the actual grade of the film. See, it's on the right is the one of the very first, if not the first version that came out on retail. And on the left is the new 4K thing. Now, okay. The left one has more contrast, right? It's clearer, it's a bit sharper. But in terms of color, see, if you look, if you look on the one, this one here, can I move around this thing? See these highlights here, right? They look blown out. Over here, they're perfectly well exposed. And here as well. See the, see this bright light coming through the, the, I don't know what you call these things. They're really nicely exposed there. Come over here, bang, clipped, gone. Gone. This was a more interesting comparison. I think the shot of Trinity on the top here, whoever graded that did a good job. They've actually done really well to preserve the original look. I actually honestly prefer the, 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 the Blu-ray version. You come to Neo on the bottom, however, Hmm, I'm not so sure. Yeah, obviously it's darker, I get that, but it's like if we're going to talk about the filmic look, the cinematic look, well, you have to talk about dynamic range and tonality. Again, see this window up here? Blown out, completely gone, clipped. Look at it here, detail. It's in the range, it's exposed properly. Here they've just said, nah, just clip it, don't care. See the exit sign? Exit sign there, it's perfectly well exposed. Here it's gone. And that to me makes it look more digital. You see again, the face. Skin tones, I prefer on the DVD. Skin tones on the Blu-ray, not a fan. I can see what they're going for. They've gone for that S curve sort of let's boost the highlights, you know, get it punchier, but this just looks more like skin to me. I much prefer that fall off. This looks like it was shot digital. That looks more like film. I think, yeah, look, it is the grade for sure. But yeah, I, I just thought that was really interesting. If I was going to remix the Matrix, I wouldn't use the uh, the, the Blu-ray. Because look at that. Up the top. That doesn't even look like they're in the Matrix anymore. That looks like they're at the beach or on, on, you know, on Los Angeles or something. Interestingly, I, I do remember, for some, I seem to remember the original film being greener than that. You know what I mean? It looked, yeah, this kind of more like this. The green, at least in this release, is actually quite subtle, but I still much prefer that look. The dynamic range of that image is so much more pleasing. This is like, oh my god, you've got red coming up in the the crossover down the, the, the light and the shadow here. Oh my god almighty. If someone graded that for me, I'd say, nah, take it back. Do that again. That's That's no good. The matrix isn't blue or red. Or pink I don't I don't know what you're thinking that looks to me like a movie you know what I mean 
Obviously the resolution sucks. And the contrast isn't so great either. But you can see again, they've just clipped everything. This light here has been blown completely. Over here it's much more well preserved because film... Film highlights don't clip nearly as fast as digital highlights do. You see, and another thing I've noticed happening is this. I'll show you. I'll give you an example. I'll actually take the camera that I'm using here. And I'll do... I'll, I'll show you guys what I see happening all the time. So in so many movies that I see on Netflix or YouTube, it's like this. It's like someone has just taken the black point and gone, uh, uh, and I don't get it. It's like, that doesn't look more filmic to me. That looks like shit. That looks like shit. You haven't increased the dynamic range. It doesn't look more filmic. It looks like shit. It looks like an Instagram filter. Okay. Black at zero, please. Fortunately, they haven't done that here. Well, no, they haven't. This is an example where they've, at least in terms of levels, they've actually done quite well. But what they've done to the color, I have no idea. Uh, I don't like it. No, I don't like it. Um, upscaling could be an option. Yeah, that's a really good idea. What would happen if someone ran the DVD through one of those AI upscalers? Or could you take the Luma channel of the... No, let's rephrase. Could you take the chroma information of the DVD and superimpose it over the Luma information of the Blu-ray? So you're getting the detail of the Blu-ray, but the color of the original grade. Your Chroma channel wouldn't have much resolution though. But it's an idea. Let me just read comments here. It's like raw red footage. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? That does look like footage straight out of a red camera. I mean, to be fair, you look at this picture here and you think, bloody hell, that is like, that's almost like the Wizard of Oz, like that sepia tone, don't you? Like that is pretty hardcore. It's funny how it's supposed to, you think of it as green, that looks more like yellow to me. So I don't know if I if I would take it that far. But then you look at the bottom here, it's, yeah, okay, I get it, the contrast isn't as poppy. You see, but... Nah. Oh, I don't know. It's like someone's taken the contrast slider. And I'll show you. It's like they've it's like they've done this. They've just gone contrast. That's what it looks like. That's what it looks like. Hang on. Where's my display? Oh, there it is. Where's another? See this, these clipped highlights here. It's like that. Job done. Graded. I guess it's a subjective thing at the end of the day. I just prefer dynamic range. I prefer tonality. And I just, yeah, that contrast shit wreaks havoc on your skin tones. You see that? Anyway, that's enough of that. I just thought it was interesting. Which version would I use? Yeah, and is there some way of like hybridizing the DVD and the Blu-ray version so you get the Luma of the one and the Chroma of the other? Interesting. I have to try, I have to experiment with that. Um. I don't know if I'll save the stream, but I, I am recording, so I might do an edit and then upload that to the, um, the Pogo Mix channel or something, maybe. It's intentionally garish because it is a Wizard of Oz fantasy world. The loss of detail. Yeah, yeah. That is one thing you definitely take away from it. Those DVDs. Is, is, wow. <laughs> There's no resolution there at all. 
But it's not the DVD, it's not the Blu-ray that has the impact on the colour. It's the way that they've graded the film. That's that's what I'm looking at. Forget about the DVD Blu-ray terminology. It's got nothing to do with that. It's just it's the way that they graded it back in the early 2000s or whenever it was that came out, and the way they grade it now. That's 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 the difference that I was looking at. The artistic decisions made in the colour suite. Do you think it's due to the bleach lens Spielberg trend of the late 90s that kind of go? See, that's an interesting point because I know exactly what you're talking about. If you watch, if you watch Hook, if you watch Minority Report, if you watch AI, what else? Um, I think even E.T. It's all shot by Janusz Kaminski, who's like, I mean, you could argue is responsible for the Spielberg look. I don't know. Um, there's an old episode of Columbo that Spielberg directed when he was much, much younger before he became a big time star. And the lighting is very, very ordinary, but you can see Spielberg's work. You can see like he's, he, he moves the camera this way and then he shoots through a mirror. And then he has a slow dolly in on this and you can see like the Spielberg brain at work it's one of the very first episodes of Columbo. But when Janusz Kaminski stepped in and you got, I think he did E.T. I'm pretty sure he did Hook, I think. I know he did Minority Report and he did AI. They have that same like super soft diffused front light and massive amounts of backlight. So I think what you're talking about with the bleach bypass thing there, I, th I think that's what you mean. Um, yeah, yeah, in AI you saw it a lot. But I, hmm. you said they, they did it for artistic effect and they did it well. They did it well. I don't remember seeing any digital clipped highlights or crushed shadows anywhere. It was a lot. I think a lot of that was actually in camera. Um, Jurassic Park. Yeah, that makes sense. Hmm. Interesting. Very different look, though, if I remember. Um. I've also been playing some, uh, some, I've been taking like screenshots in games and things, you see. So this is Control. I think this is on PS5. And this is with the color grade turned off. This is in-game footage, uh, photo mode. And I've turned that the crappy color grading off because I actually think it looks more realistic without it. Control is just a brilliant game, by the way. If you haven't played Control, please do. Oh, oh, it's 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 really really good. But I also think that the the graphics are really good because I get the impression that there's light reflecting between surfaces. You can certainly see actual reflections in the trash can there, right? From the floor, that's pretty impressive. That's probably ray. Maybe it's ray tracing. No, I think it is actually because it's got that sort of speckled, sampled look to it. Um. Yeah, I just I just thought, wow, this game looks really freaking good, man. And it's just stuff like this. I, I don't know why. I, I just love I love shapes and geometry and things. And then um, let's see, Ghost of Tsushima. For some reason, I've only got one freaking picture in there. I made this image thinking I was going to put it on social media, and I was like, nah. Why? What's it got to do with anything? But yeah, for a while, um, I was playing Tsushima with 3D audio for headphones. And I was using these headphones using an amp because you can plug your headphones right into the controller, but depending on the ohms of your headphones, they might not sound that great. It might not get the power that it needs. So you use an amplifier and holy shit, man, this sounded really good. Like you've probably heard 3D audio gimmicks and things before, but this is actually really freaking good. So I had that turned on and I just thought, wow, people have got to hear this. Um, no Man's Sky is also quite good. These are all screenshots in the game. This game has changed a lot. A lot. This is not even, this is, this doesn't even resemble the first No Man's Sky that came out anymore. Not the graphics so much, but the game and the way that everything works. Just taking stupid screenshots. I've got way more than that. I don't know where they are. Oh yeah, and I tried playing Star Citizen as well. I took screenshots of this because I was like, geez, Louise, someone has modeled the hell out of this game. 
Like that's that's some of the best geometry, I've, like hard surface modeling I've ever seen. Just like, wow. Unfortunately, the game is about as f fun to play as um, pulling your hair out. But the graphics, I was like, holy shit, this is, this is really, uh, wow. Someone has obviously been paid, <laughs> paid a lot of money to put this together. Yeah. Just a lot of, you know, 3D modeling inspiration. Like, geez, man, someone has really gone to town on the detail for this stuff. See, look at these guns for your ship that you can buy. It's just unfortunate that they couldn't have put that work into um, a better game. I don't know. Look at that. Bloody hell, someone has spent a long, a lot of time putting that together. I reckon they're using hard ops in Blender. I wouldn't be surprised. It's just amazing you can get polygons like this in a game. Of course, it does tend to run at like 28 frames per second, so go figure. Um, tracks and things. Yeah, so... I can try, uh, let me see if I can find some more stuff in FL. Because I did kind of want to go through some things, uh, but it turns out my sound card isn't really agreeing with me. I reckon it's just all the CPU going on. Let's see. Um, Supremo Dragonfly Paddock Cake. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. high jump oh yeah yeah that was an NPC thing just check comments real quick um, thoughts on NVIDIA DLSS resolution upscaler I haven't really used it does it not introduce like a latency or something surely because it upscales the game as you're playing it right so doesn't that mean that it takes like it adds Latency? Surely. I don't know. What is this? Oh yeah. This is actually all stuff that I did on an NPC. And then I've just exported the stems. I don't know where I'm going with it really. So when I put this together, it was all it's all um, inbuilt instruments on the MPC Live 2, which I have around here somewhere. And um, I remember I had it on my lap. I was on the couch in front of um, the High Jump Olympics or something on YouTube. And um, every now and then, you know, one of the ladies, they wouldn't. Do you still say ladies anymore? Women, girls. No, that's patronizing. What do we say? Um, we'll just say people. One of the people, were, as they were high jumping, some of them would just, that they wouldn't quite make the bar. Like the bar would come falling down. I was like, but I didn't see them touch it. It's just, it's so frustrating. So I kind of channeled that. I was going to call this track um, high jump, actually. I was going to call it failure or something or try harder or something like that. Yeah. 
yeah, it's all synths and stuff from the NPC. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to cut this stream together. Um, the ban is up, but lockdown is still getting in the way. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hey, it's the music producer. <laughs> game reviews. Yeah, I haven't done game reviews for a while. I just, I don't really see the point anymore. Except in the case of Dreams. Well, that's different. That's not really a game as much as it is a powerhouse of stuff that you can, yeah, you can make anything in that game. That is just a phenomenal, phenomenal game. Um, let's see. I'm trying to find... Yeah, I guess I could potentially show you um, Mr. Wilson's Revenge. It just depends if my computer is going to agree with me. It's quite a lot of CPU and stuff going on today. Pupes, Pweeps, good to see you. Thanks for coming. I'm going to pour myself another glass. Which does tend to sound a bit dodgy. I do apologize. RDR2 review. You know what? I don't like Red Dead 2 anymore. Mm -mm. I actually don't like open world games at all. Seeing as we're talking about gaming, just, just for, I, I know I'm tangenting everywhere, but I'm just, just quickly. I actually think open world games are shit. I think they're shit. Because every one of them is the same freaking thing. It's just riding. Okay, we've got to get on horseback. We're gonna, you gotta ride for five straight minutes or drive or walk. And then you gotta follow this NPC. And then you gotta do the exact same minutia that you've done a million times before, just in different locations. And it's rinse and repeat. And then padding and then filler and then padding and then filler. And I hate to say this, I, I really do like Ghost of, Sush Sush Ghost of Tsushima. I love it, but it, it's the same. It's the same. It's just the same open world bollocks. And you know what changed my mind? It was Ratchet and Clank, A Rift Apart on PS5. I don't know how I got it. I, I managed to just, I, I must have just pre-ordered one at the right time. Because no one can get it. And I was thinking maybe I could do a stream where I, I plug the PS5 in and I actually show you guys the coolness but I was playing a rift apart and I finished it I finished the hell out of that game and I thought man this this is a this is a game this is like this is what this is what Sonic the Hedgehog was to me when I was eight you know this is like a ra ratchet and clank a rift apart it, there is so much love poured into that thing it's so much fun it's like, wow. There's open world elements and things, but I wouldn't call it an open world game. And yeah, that's when I was like, geez, I'm, I'm not going from place to place. I'm not doing the same dumb shit over and over again. I'm not following an NPC. I hate that. Don't you hate following NPCs? Come on. Come on. You know why they put that shit in there. It's to space it out, it's to get to get a bit more length in there, a bit more girth, but it's bollocks. It's nonsense. There's none of that in Ratchet and Clank. It's just it's just constant fun. I guess every game has its gameplay loop, you know, every game is repetitive at its core to an extent. But it's like when the game compensates for its own format. You know how most open world games have a fast travel system? Yeah, I wonder why they put that in there. I wonder why they put that in there. Because it's tedious getting around, doing the same dumb thing over and over. It's just, yeah, that's why there's fast travel. Actually, interestingly, goes to a sush... No, what am I thinking of? There's a game that doesn't give you fast travel for a long time. Kingdom Come Deliverance or something. I don't know what it was. Anyway, that's my rant. Oh yeah, that's what this is. So these vocals here, this is, this is, um, can you guys hear this okay? Let me just change this a bit. I sat in Ableton for an hour trying to get these voices to sound more demonic. And eventually I was like, well, it's not happening. Mr. Wilson. 
So, I may or may not have this chain in here. Okay, so let me see if I can take the effects off. I don't want to see you. There's the original. Listen to that. I don't want to see you. I don't want to know you. It's completely unrecognizable. I don't want to see you. I don't want to know you. So, check this out. This is two altar boys. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know why I've got two there. I have to go back through and try retrace my steps. And I've got micro shift. Sound Toys, by the way, is just an amazing plug-in bundle. Oh my goodness. Wait for a sale and just get all of them. Just get all of them. Choruses, delays, saturators. Um, there's a plate reverb in there, it's okay. But yeah, this is how I did this. And then I've EQ'd this quite substantially because I wanted meat. I wanted some muscularity on the voice here. I don't want to see you. This bit. Actually, it's more down here. And I mixed this track in a room where I have two subwoofers. Because the low end in this track is, um, well, I actually still think it's maybe a little bit much. Yeah, like holy shit, Nick. Maybe just dial that back a little. There's a lot to unpack here. There's a lot to talk about here. Um, I might just play use a bit more first. Then again, we come back to the vocal strip here. So I'll, I'll pull, I'll take the effects. Let's take the effects off this for a sec. You're a pest, a menace, a selfish, spoiled little boy, and I have no use for you. You're a pest, a menace, a selfish, spoiled little boy, and I have no use for you. You took something from me that I could never get back. Something that means more to me than you ever will. You understand? I don't want to see you. think I was right to pull this bass down. I do think there's too much in there. I, I really really want to put this track on an album um, with Chasing the UFO but I need to mix Chasing the UFO again because I did it all on headphones and I listened to it on speakers and I was like damn um, that the, 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 the bass region in the synth is a disaster. It's just I cannot hear what I'm trying what, what I've actually done so I need to do that again. But yeah, I definitely think I've pulled, I've, I think this is the right thing to do with this bass end. I think it's just a little bit hot. Yeah, there's a lot going on here. I don't want to spend too long talking about this, but um, this is an Omnisphere patch that I recorded because Omnisphere is huge. It takes up a lot of computing power and I don't want stacks and stacks of VSTs so I'll just go into a separate project and record things and ideas and layers and so then I can just bring it in as audio and it's it's no problem stuff like this you 
can hear the side the um the shaper box that's actually another thing it is a lot to talk about here. um shaper box where are we so this is a thing that i would highly highly recommend you guys look into um where's some audio But basically, you say that this graph represents, um, what is that, a beat, a, a quarter of a measure, or something like that. Don't ask me about music theory. <clears throat> I don't know shit about music theory. But basically, you give this graph a time, and you say, I want the volume to change according to this graph. Or you can do it with drive, like saturation. How do you want the saturation to change over time for each beat? Um, there's quite a few plugins that you can do this with now. Time, filter, like high pass, low pass, crushing, I haven't actually tried that yet. Stereo width, that's a weird one, panning. So this is good for getting that. Let me see if I can. So if I take that off. Well. I took that one off anyway, I guess there's another one somewhere, but you can hear that sort of effect. Um, it's to give your chords some rhythm instead of just being a drone. You, gi you give them some, some something to play with the drums. Um, okay, so like in terms of sounds and voices and things, there's a whole bunch of Dungeon Keeper stuff in here. all dungeon keeper sounds but then again i've gone and run it through it's actually running through the same vocal strip as mr wilson because i just love that envelopment of it coming around my head you definitely don't want to do that with bass you don't want your bass to be up in your ears like that you want it to be quite centered so it's the same signal coming out both channels um with mid bass, you can you can have you can have it coming around, but when you have like a bass strip here, um, one of the cool things about FabFilter Pro Q is that I can EQ based on mid slash side channel. So a really good rule of thumb is to say, okay, on the side channel here, I'm going to roll off everything under, let's say, I don't know, 100 hertz. And there's not really anything there because I've already mixed it to be mono. But you can definitely have your bass nice and warm and fuzzy and synthy up around like 200, 300 hertz if you want, depending on what your chords are doing. But anything under that, you want your sub bass, your fundamentals to be mono. And you can do that using your side channel in Pro-Q. Um, yeah, I don't know what I was talking about before that. Sorry, sorry, it's a bit of a tangent. Um... Yeah, it is on SoundCloud already, this one, yeah. But again, I think I might just come back to that low end if I put this on an album because it's a little bit, it's, it's yeah, it's it's a little bit silly. It's a bit nuts. But I did mix this on um, two speakers and two subs. And you might be thinking, well, why do you have two subs? Why isn't one enough? Isn't two subs adding too much bass? So subs don't actually add bass so much as they equalize the distribution of sound pressure throughout the room so if you have one sub in that corner well geez i your, your room better be acoustically damn near perfect because you're gonna have a really big peak at like 50 hertz and then a massive trough at like 60 hertz and then another big peak it's not even and it's not because of the sub it's because of the placement to an extent but when you have more than one sub in a room you're you're equalizing the sound pressure distribution and so you, you know, you, 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 if you were to measure the bass response on a graph, it would go from being this to being a bit more like this. So now I can hear all of those notes. And you either have a sub in front of you and behind you, if it's a really long room, or you have one in like behind each speaker, like one side, the other side. And you just get a really cheap measurement mic and you just run sine wave sweeps through Room EQ Wizard or something like that. But I used two subs for this because I really, really needed to hear what my bass region was doing. Like in a live room where bass is going to be big anyway. Um, because that's a, that, that's a, yeah, for a track like this, that's a big deal. Big, big deal. 
Um, in terms of instruments and stuff, let's see what we've got. So we've got Diva. This is an awesome synth if you want if you want something that sounds analog and rich and fat and real, Diva's the way to go. Um, that actually took me a really, really long time to get that right. But you can see here, okay, so this, you can see I've rolled off the bottom and I've take, I've boosted just a little bit in the sort of 300-ish region. Um, because I actually take care of the sub bass in a separate, with a separate instrument in a separate track. So there's our kick, which I don't think I've compressed. This is before I got into drum compression. Yeah, it's just running through a saturator, which I probably wouldn't do that again. I feel a bit more tempted to run this through something like press work. I'll show you press work. Press work is awesome because it comes with presets for drums that you can use as a starting point. So like Dax, um, Dax Smasher. Just to kind of illustrate what this does, let me put on, let's put on a plate. All right, so just ignore that for a moment. Let's just take this off. So let's say your kick has some natural reverb like this. See what the compressor does. See, that's, that's, that's an extreme example. But it gives, you the, it gives you the impression of size and power. So if your kick is super dry, just give it a little bit of plate or a little bit of room or the seventh heaven or something like that. And it will give that compressor something to lift right after the attack. So you get that, that feeling that the drum's really smashing. Um, I wasn't doing that back when I made this. I've just chucked it through a dip, dip, <laughs> decapitator, which is not really the best idea. All you're doing with saturation is just adding overtones. And I think really what you want with drums is you want to compress with a slow attack, maybe a faster release. Um, and how you EQ the signal going into the compressor has a big impact as well. Um, yeah. So anyway, that's a good ramble sesh. Everyone's like, yes, interesting, interesting. Seems like I need to reinstall the app. I know you're probably sick of getting this question. How do you feel about people using your music as part of an intro on YouTube or something? I think it's awesome. I love it. I absolutely love it when people use my stuff, unless it's for something nasty or sinister. But no, 99% of the time people just use it for like, um, like someone at the moment, like I got an email the other day, someone's making Harry Potter um, wands in their workshop for their YouTube channel and they want to use uh, Aloha Mora for the background music. I'm like, hell yeah, do it. Do it. I actually want to see that. I think you got to take exposure where you can get it. Um, I mean, yeah, even if someone's monetizing on YouTube. Yeah. If they're doing really well, well, it's getting your stuff out there, isn't it? It's, it's getting your content out. That's kind of important. Okay, so I'll tell you what. FL Studio is not giving me shitty latency clicks. So let's just put these in there. I think I actually prefer this a bit faster. Um, Bumble TV, give me credit. Yeah, I'd, I'd appreciate it, man. I really would. Copyright striking people. No. no. I don't see the point. Now this is a song. No, I never played with the um, Spider-Man um, samples. No. Spider-Man 2. Or is that, is that a question for me or is that for um, Charlie? One simple gamer. That is Charlie. You are Charlie. This is the song. Um, yeah, you did send me those. I, I haven't touched them really, no. 
No, once I stopped making that thing, um, that was it. I, I, I'm not into superhero movies. I'm really not. I think they're all kind of the same thing. It's all written by an algorithm. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Spider-Man 12. Captain who gives a shit saves the planet of whatever. Eh. Marvel Milk Fest 8. Really? Um, yeah, I really did like the first um, two Spider-Man movies, though. Hmm. Or just the first one, rather. And the first X-Men movie was not too bad either with Patrick Stewart. In fact, a lot of the X-Men movies were pretty decent. But that's before it was a, 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 you know, that's before the whole superhero movie thing was a conveyor belt. That's before Hollywood was like, oh, money. Break out the algorithms. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just getting old and grumpy. That's all it is. What's this? Fucking hell. This thing just, I, I don't know why. I don't know why. I'm getting like latency pops in my media player, but not in my ACO program. Uh, my soy face. What's a soy face look like? Diablo 4. Hell yeah. Oh yeah. I still have faith for Blizzard. Hope. Definitely. Are those latency skips possibly to do with the disk read speeds? Ah, it's an SSD. I've got like four SSDs in this thing. I don't know what it is. You know what? I, I think I do know what it is actually. I, I, I use... um. I use a Motu M2 audio card, and yeah, I like it, but man, it, it gives me some funny problems. It gives me some funny problems all the time, and I wouldn't be surprised if this is one of them. Hmm, wouldn't be surprised. What's this bollocks? What's this palaver? Oh, is that what a soy? I don't know. I've got my latency up at 1024. There's no reason why it should be doing that. What games am I excited about? Uh, none, to be honest. It's all a bit bollocks. It's all a bit shy. Games. I think Valhalla should have got the Game of the Year award. It was instead it was um, what was her name? Kanji and the something forest or something. The wisps. Uh, I don't know. Um, no, I'm not really looking forward to. Well, oh, actually, um, the, the what's the next Horizon? I'm looking forward to that. That's another open world game. So yeah, I'll, I'll I don't know. I'm not getting too excited. Deep Rock Galactic is really good, especially if you're doing co-op. Oh my goodness, that's good. Mm. And it's free now on PS4 and PS5 if you have a PlayStation Plus subscription. Mm. Deep Rock Galactic is good. Isn't Bethesda doing a space thing or something like Skyrim in space? Everyone's, so, everyone's saying it. I mean, ever since Fallout 76, I've kind of lost faith in their, in their, their company. But that's still kind of intriguing. Skyrim in space. That's clever marketing. That's some good buzzwords right there. I'm, I'm that my ears just go up immediately. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Definitely interested. Um. Yeah. The games industry is going bonkers. Says Jastic. I don't know. 
it's losing, it's getting shit. The triple A side of things. It's all like all the best stuff is in is the, is in the indie industry now. I think. Psychonauts. No, I haven't played that yet. Is that any good? The second one. Glad to catch a little bit of the stream, says Red Kaleidoscope. I wanted to thank you for asking Lemon for making the art on your new album. Yeah, she did an awesome job. I absolutely love it. She's a big friend. Oh, cool. I'm glad she is receiving a lot of attention that she deserves. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. She is very talented. Yeah, crazy. Kendall Twitch. That's a familiar name. I'll tell you what, yeah. Oh my goodness. Half-Life Alex. Oh, jeez. Half-Life Alex was like, whoa, man, Valve. I tell you, Valve still has it, guys. They, they've still got it. They, they never lost it, ever. It, they just kind of changed changed course. They, they, they saw the, the money in Steam. But um, no, uh, Half-Life Alex, it's, it's a shame you can't play with a mouse and keyboard. You've got to get that stupid VR headset. You've got to move your furniture around. You've got to turn your living room upside down. You've got to clamp shit to your curtain rails. Move the couch. Upgrade your graphics card. Oh, come on. What are we thinking? What are we thinking? I think it, the whole VR thing, it, it needs to be as quick and simple and painless as picking up a controller and sitting on your couch. I think until it gets to that point, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure I have faith. It's, it's like it's asking too much of your average gamer. What is it like 0.1% of people on Steam have <laughs> a VR or something or other? I don't know what the number is. It's not very big. Um, yeah, let me see if I can pull up a um, different project file for you guys. I don't know if you're finding it interesting. I, I, I really don't. Uh, let's have a look here. Something that's actually got some meat on the bone. The plodder. No. 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 Oh yeah, XO. Yeah, I could show you the XO plugin. That's actually quite good. Hmm. Yeah, I, I thought I had more than this. Bloody hell. Hmm. Have you heard? Have you read the storybook, The Final Hours of Half Life, Alex? No. It talks about what Valve's been up to for the past decade. Interesting. Well, there's another thing I can write down. What's that? It. The Final Hours of Half Life, Alex. Okay, the VR game, right? Yeah. I've been messing with Canyon Canyon style mastering on random songs. What's Canyon style? Is that like Gangnam style? And the difference it makes is super interesting. Especially using jazz songs like Sungazer. Canyon style. Open Canyon style. Aren't we glad that meme died? Canyon You gotta be trolling me. God, that's got to be a troll. I do Gangnam style mastering on my mixes. Works every time. The same V-shaped thing you were describing. Canyon style. Oh, I see. Hmm. No, it's just like I, I. I went through this period of listening to like '90s ballads, and one thing that blew my mind is how suppressed the mids are on like Celine Dion's um, 
my heart will go on or whatever it is. It's like, bloody hell, they've really tamed those mids. Really tamed them. Jeez. But what I liked about it is that it, it evened everything out. It brought up the instruments around me and it, it, it balanced everything. It made for like a more immersive mix. As opposed to everything being like this, it was kind of more like that. Or even like that, kind of coming up around you. Um, yeah. But I hope people like the new, uh, the new Stranger Things mix. I, I think it's in a better place. Yeah, I, mm, I'm, I'm not sure I would say that about all the tracks on there. But you know, you get to a point where it's like, oh, come on, I've, 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 I've really, I've, I've been through this now. Three weeks is enough. I, I, I don't need to keep going, surely. Surely this is enough. Um, anyway, how long have I been streaming for now? Bloody oath. What does that say? Two hours. Yeah, two hours is good. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'll have to find some more stuff to show you guys if I come back and do a do another sesh. Um, actually, what I could maybe do is go through those um, those vinyl samples because some of those are pretty cool. Uh, let's have a look here. Where's my thing? Give me some vol. So let's see how many of these I've actually recorded. Uh, let's have a look here. How do I move this window? Oh my god. Yep, okay. That's a very temperamental browser. Why can't things be the way they were? So let's see how many of these I actually got. Let's go all the way down to the bottom. I've named and numbered each one of them. And what I like to do with my samples, what I used to do in the old days was like 61.wav, 62.wav. And of course, if you have more than one file with that name on your hard drive, which is very possible, then FL Studio is just going to load whatever it finds the next time. And you don't know what the file is when it's just a number. So I give everything keywords in the file name, like chord, strings, piano, voice, male group. Um, loop, chord, voice, male group, bass. Snare, snare, rim. How interesting. He kept hearing noises. Who's got your clothes? She earned in rabbit wool mitty. Oh, what a fearful noise. Have some jelly. I will, thanks. I mean, you can't fault that. No, that's, be, that's delicious. What's happening? Collected in high five. Peter Sellers. I would like you to listen. We still find examples of the exquisite workmanship. Which are... May I plug my latest record? Do you like it? Yes, yes. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's AI extracted again. Yeah, there's a lot here, man. On that you can depend to find it how often I try at the end of a rainbow. A little starter. Isn't that lovely? Like Rosa, make my dream. Yeah, I could go through this for a long time. Ah, uh, it's uh, Mike Oldfield, I think. I am very glad. Well, good evening and welcome to the Camden. Perfection, you can hear the same wonderful sound. Yeah, I, st I really want to do something with that. Oh yeah, die straight, yeah. 
That's the Rast G vinyl. Bloody hell, I really did spend a long time on this, didn't I? Oh, this is the embarrassing. And this is the song, and suddenly, and the bluebells which are ringing. Oh, the butterfly. This song, and neither can. Now this is. Holy shit, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be here all day. I'll be here all day, guys. But, um, yeah, that's just going through vinyls and vinyls and vinyls. I, I, I went to um, secondhand stores for like a couple of weeks. Um, I got all my parents' vinyls because they got uh, they got Tears for Fears, the Santana, Cleo Lane. They've got um, uh, I think even Rick Astley. I think the the, the original um, Rick Astley album. Um, yeah, and I sampled all the vinyl through an MPC, and then on the MPC I ran a thing that emulates the sound of old MPC gear. I know it's a bit naff, but I just I found it gave it a bit more impact. So um, yeah, I've actually sl I've got all the vinyls that I've recorded on my NAS. Mm. Because you never know when you're going to need to go back and, and do stuff and uh, pull some more content. Sun's gonna shine. Believe me. That's a classic. Yeah, that's nice. Mm -hmm. You looked, I won't be. Yeah, anyway, I've been streaming for two hours. I'm getting a bit tired. Um, and to be quite frank, I'm running out of things to talk about and I'm running out of things to show you. To show y'all, as you say in America. I think that's how you guys say it. Y'all. I Albuquerque. I Albuquerque. I think that's how they speak in America. I'm not sure. That's what I gather from TV. I love America. I love America. It's awesome. I love their steaks. Well, I've never actually had one, but they look really good on TV. I love it. That headphone here. Yeah, I know, right? You get this, like, crease. It's like you've been in the studio, haven't you? Do a Dreams stream. That's not a bad idea. I think Dreams is getting a PS5 update now or something. My phone bill is now available. Great. Cool. Um, yeah, so thanks for coming, folks. I really appreciate it. Um, I hope the album goes... Uh, I, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you have a good time. It's uh, certainly taken me a hell of a long time to mix, and I hope I got it right. Eh, there's always things that you think, well, that could be a bit better. But no. Three weeks is enough. That's enough time. I'm done. I, I need to move on to other things. I really want to have a go at something for The King's Speech, which is that film with Jeffrey Rush, based on a true story. And Jeffrey Rush obviously played Captain Barbosa in Pirates of the Caribbean. And um, he does an absolutely cracking job. Jeffrey Rush is an Australian actor. I love him. He's, he's so good. And that film, it's all about like fixing a speech impediment with exercises and things. There's a lot of mouth exercising and vocal sounds and things. Um, so really, I, I want to see what's possible. Anyway, um, thanks very much for coming, guys. I did record... And I, um, I'll see if I can edit something together for the Pogo Mix channel. Something a bit less, um, well, precisely that. Less um, less umming and ahhing, less tedium. Yeah, something a bit more, um, well, there you go. I'm doing it again. Anyway, folks, thanks very much. Uh, thanks very much to Jastic. Thanks to Nico. Thanks to One Simple Gamer, Charlie, Daxtron, uh, Green Brogramer, M Knots Me. That's just sad. Yeah. I should just stream all day. I should just find bollocks to talk about and things to do. I think I might just... Um, it would be really interesting to plug the PS5 into an HDMI and show you guys some stuff. Ratchet and Clank is fantastic. 
And then you get all the remastered stuff, you know, like Mass Effect. It's like, yeah, but I've played it. I don't care if it wasn't in 4K. You could get Quake on PS5, 120 hertz if your TV can support it. It's cool, but it's Quake. Hmm. It's not a reason to go buy a PS5, is it? Chat paused due to scroll. Oh, okay. I was getting lonely. Anyway, thanks very much, folks. All the best for 2022. I hope you're happy. I hope you're healthy. Try to keep a level head. Keep your head on a swivel, as they say. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys again in the near future if I can find stuff to stream about. Yeah, peace.